So what I'm hoping for in the first instance is that they and little George will say the tax burden is too high in this country. We're going to cut spending. We're going to repay some of the national debt because the debt is now unacceptable. We're certainly not going to incur the levels of debt that Labour would like to incur and would like us to incur. And we're going to put some money back into the pockets of ordinary, decent, hard-working people. Now that, to me, seems to be the most perfect Tory thing to do at any time, but it's <coughs> particularly the most perfect Tory thing to do at a time when we are in a serious economic slump. Mr. Balls, the appropriately named education minister, um, has <coughs> said this week that this could be the worst financial downturn in the Western world for 100 years. I think he may be right. I hate to have to agree with him, but I think he probably has right on the side. Of course, he hasn't discussed the contribution that his own um, uh, uh, puppet master, Gordon Brown, has made to this, but we'll, you know, we'll live in hope of that conversion later on. But I think he's right to say that. Now, at a time when things are as bad as that, the key thing is to get demand going. How do you get demand going? Not by saying to people, you must spend money, because people are terrified of losing their jobs. You actually put more money in their pockets, and you say to them, if you go and spend this money, it doesn't matter how you do it, when you go to a shop, I was going to say, well, it's not existing. <laughs> whether you go into a shop, or, or whether you even pay off some of your debts, because that money recapitalizes a financial institution that can then lend it on and, and, and get economic activity going. They don't care how they spend the money, but give them money to spend, give them money to use, give them money even to save, because if it's saved in the productive sectors of the economy, it will go to much more economic good than being spent uh, on the client state in the unproductive sector of the economy. So that's the first thing I want Dave to do. The second thing, which is totemic of that, is I want him to say that he isn't going to enforce Gordon Brown's 45% tax rate on people who are paid over 150,000 a year. Now, I will declare my interest. I earn over 150,000 pounds a year, and I'm very grateful that I do. Uh, I also work extremely hard to earn that money, um, and I feel I deserve it. I feel that's my market price. I feel if I went to other newspapers, they would pay me the same as I'm paid now. I resent having to pay an additional quite large sum of tax on that money in future years. Not purely because I don't take very much out of the state. My children are privately educated. I have private health care. I look after myself. I don't expect the state to look after me or my family. But because many like me who don't consider ourselves to be particularly well off, because I believe me, when I pay for all those things, there isn't much left, we believe that we deserve the recognition of the state for what we do for the state. If we educate our children privately, we are freeing up places in quite good schools for other people who can't afford to educate their children privately. I happen to live in the catchment area of two really brilliant grammar schools, one of which I attended. My children don't go there. They would go there if I couldn't afford to send them to the schools that they go to. I've freed up two places by my financial sacrifice. Okay, I'm doing it for them, and I don't want any, any moral reward for that but the state should recognize what I do, just as the state should recognize people who look after their own elderly, who look after their own health care, yeah. rather than depend on the state to do it. And many of those people are in the bracket that earns over 150,000 pounds a year, so <coughs> people who are already taking a massive burden off the state are now being asked to pay more to the state because they are deemed to be rich. And this is Labour Party caricature of all well-off people, all well-to-do people, spending most of their lives on yachts or in casinos, a bit like George Osborne, really. <laughs> it's not true. And I want the Conservative Party to stand up for its constituency and say, if we tax those people at 45% on what they earn over 150,000 a year, first of all, their, their accountants will find ways that they're avoiding it, and they will. Well, I've already had that conversation with my accountant, and I imagine a number of other people have too. So the, ta the take will be minimal. And so it just looks like spite. It also disincentivizes people. I know that if I were given the opportunity of working harder to get more money, I would think, well, hang on, I've got 5% less reason to do that than I had recently because I was only going to pay 40% tax on that until a moment ago, now I'm paying 45%. Given that the tax take is so small for that amount of money, why on earth doesn't the Conservative Party say it is a vindictive tax, it's a sectarian tax, it's aimed at principally our voters. 
and we're not going to enforce it. After all, can you imagine what would happen if a Conservative government enforced a tax that was going to hit almost entirely Labour voters? There would be a massive outcry in this country. But the, the wealth creators in this country, the people who do work hard, the people of talent, I don't include myself there, I'm an accident, but the people of talent who earn that sort of money, and a lot more than I do, they're being penalised for their talent, they're being disincentivised at just the time when this country needs wealth creators and innovative, entrepreneurial, risk-taking people to pull us up out of the gutter. Now, I can't see what the problem is with a Conservative Party saying that. It's only going to raise another, we're told, three or four billion a year if we're lucky. And that's the Guardian's estimation, not mine. They say three or four billion a year. That is less than 0.75% of our total national expenditure every year. Now, if you're telling me that the Conservative Party can't save 0.75% of our total national expenditure every year, I won't believe you. We now come down to questions about will. What the Conservative Party is really afraid of is being seen to be the TOFs party. They are a party who, in every turn, now wish to associate themselves with various minorities. I'm a member of a number of minorities. I have red hair. Um, <laughs> I'm a middle-class white man. You know, we are getting fewer, but fewer and fewer in number. Um, I don't mind being a minority, and I have, I have a live and let live attitude towards all other minorities. <coughs> but I don't expect to have to pay for them. And I don't see why the Conservative Party has this desperate desire to curry favour with them. I go back to a very good point that John Redwood, of whom I'm a huge and almost uncritical admirer, made about the 1997 election result. He said, five million people went missing between 1992 and 1997 from the Conservative Party vote. They weren't people who went to vote for other parties, they just didn't vote. For referendum. Or the referendum the party. party. They just, but they just didn't vote. And they haven't really gone back to vote. The turnout for the Tory party has been more or less stable <coughs> since 1997. We have a low turnout now of about 60% at general elections. And who is to say, given the excellent example that our political masters set us with, Jackie Smith now ripping off the taxpayer enormously for her so-called main residence uh, in London, in, in her sister's um, spare room. Um, who, is, who is to say uh, that the turnout will be any higher next time? Most people I know look at the um, look at the state of our political class right across the, the spectrum and say, I don't want to endorse these people. I don't want to support them. So how does the Conservative Party get those, I think probably four or five million people who are natural conservatives and who won't vote how does it get them back on side? Because if it gets them back on side, they'll win a landslide. Mm -hmm. And, they'll, be in, and they'll, win, they'll keep on winning landslides so long as they keep them there. I think, I may be very naive, but I think the answer is quite simple. You give them back their money. Because we've just endured 12 give years. Give them back their country. Well, <laughs> well, we'll, come to that. We'll, we'll come to that. First things first. <laughs> There's no point giving them back a bankrupt country. Give them back a, give them back a country that's got, that's got the ability to create wealth. Say to people, we're no longer going to just pick your pockets and expect you to fund our client state. Say to people, we're going to reward your enterprise. We're going to put money back into the productive sectors of the economy. Now that's the first thing the Conservative Party has to do. And yes, it will mean that a lot of people lose their jobs in the public sector. But we're not talking about the unskilled, the people who were even skilled people in, in manufacturing and heavy industries in the 1970s, who really, at the age of 45 or 50, could not read trade and could not get another job because they only had one skill. We're talking about people who are now middle managers, who are bureaucrats, who are computer literate, who have got skills that could transfer to the private sector. <coughs> Um, these are not coal miners, they're not steel workers, they're people who've got, who have got bureaucratic skills uh, that can be transferred to commercial enterprise. And we have to make that shift in this country in the next 10 or 15 years, because otherwise all those people, all those call centers, for example, that we have factored out to India will be factored back to here. And we'll know that we've really lost it as a country when we have call centers in this country that are running big businesses based